Hi, this is Jonathan Gardner, 744, Lorentz Force Law and Potential Form from Griffith's Introduction to Electrodynamics, 2nd edition. You might have the 3rd edition, the 4th edition is coming out soon. Um, so, Lorentz Force Law says the F vector, which is just the change in momentum of the particle, is equal to the charge of the particle times the electric field plus the velocity of the particle across the V field. Okay, And so let's express this in potential form rather than and the electric and magnetic fields. So that's just equal to Q times E is negative grad V uh, minus the uh, time derivative of A vector and then V plus V vector cross the curl of A vector. Okay, we're going to take advantage of a of product rule number four, which says that the gradient of the dot product is equal to the first vector cross the curl of the second plus this thing right here, V dot del A vector. Okay, this thing confuses the heck out of a lot of people. Um, I'm going to take a few moments to explain what this means. Okay, so V dot del. This is V vector, not V. This is the velocity, not the potential. Okay. V dot del equals Vx d by dx plus Vy d by dy plus Vz d by dz. Okay. So apply that to A. So you're basically taking this scalar quantity and multiplying each component of A. And so you end up with this times a x i hat, a y j hat, and a z k hat. And so the end result, I'm going to write it out in its full glory. It, it's important because there's some um, there's some cons concepts here that you probably want to understand. Um, and I've, I've seen people really, you know, go berserk over this thing when it really isn't that complicated. It's just long. So we have v x d by d x of a x plus Vy d by dy of Ax plus Vz d by dz of Ax, all of that in the i hat direction, plus Vx d by dx Ay plus Vy d by dy Ay plus Vz d by dz Ay in the j hat direction, plus V, Z, D by D, Z, A, Z, uh, this is X, X, Z, plus V, Y, D by D, Y, A, Z, plus V, Z, D by D, Y, A, Z, in the K hat direction. That's what it is. So there's nine terms. Uh, it should remind you of, you probably uh, would prefer writing that in some matrix form, but that's that's all of it in the full glory. Okay. Now, if we plug in this to this, we get this end result. And I'm going to express it in change of momentum rather than forces because we're going to start thinking about momentum very shortly. So we have the total charge times, and I'm going to combine these two terms first. So we have um, negative. Let's, let's distribute the negative sign out. So negative Q, um, dA by dt. Okay. And this dude is right here. Okay, so it's equal to this. Well, it's equal to this minus that. We're inverting the signs, so it's plus. Okay, this guy is right here. And then we have this term. And we have that term. They're both gradients. So we're going to have uh, plus the gradient of V minus the velocity dot a vector. Okay. That's Lorentz force law in potential form. Okay. Let's talk about this these first two terms and what that means. Okay. This has a special name. It's called the convective derivative. And it, it's actually, you know, if you have a particle moving through a field, it's actually the total derivative of a vector. So it says, how does a vector actually change 
not just from the changing a vector at a particular point, but the fact that you're moving through that a vector and your motion, you get a change because the a vector is changing, but you also get a change because you've moved through the field into a new point. Okay? And so this dude, a way to think of him is let's take our, our curve, which when we zoom in becomes a straight line. So I'm going to zoom in here. So we have these two points. Okay? So at time t we're here, and time dt, t plus dt, we're over there. Our velocity vector, that's our velocity vector, okay? And so the position here is wherever we were r vector, and the position here is r vector plus v vector dt, whatever time difference we have. And so let's say you had an a vector that points like that, r vector, comma, t, okay? And then over here, it changes. R vector plus V vector dt, and then t plus dt. Okay, so we have a change because the vector field could be changing. So the next moment, let me just draw this in a different color, the A vector could be like this. Okay. It doesn't matter what the, the A vector field does at the point you were at. That's not where you're interacting with. Your test charge doesn't interact with where it used to be in the future. It actually interacts with where it is in the future. Okay? So at this point, you have the A vector, and at this point, you have a new A vector that depends not only on how the time changed, but on how the position of the particle changed. Okay. So we have our total derivative of A um, could be thought of as the time derivative of A Okay, plus times Vx okay it can be thought of as this okay if we have a velocity that's only in the x direction then how the a vector changes in terms of y and z so how the a vector goes up here or how the a vector is out of the page is irrelevant. It doesn't matter because we're not moving in that direction. We're only moving in the vx direction. Okay? And so we think about, okay, we're moving the x direction, so how does the a vector change with respect to x? That's what's important, right? Or if, let's say, we're moving in the y direction, we're moving up and down. It doesn't matter how a changes in the x direction or the z direction. It matters how a changes in the y direction. Now these derivatives are actually the derivative of x for the ax component in the i hat direction plus the derivative of y in the y component in the j hat direction and the derivative of x with respect to z in the, the k hat direction. So um, of a, a, x, d, d, a, a, x, a, z in the k hat direction. And so we get um, these three terms right here for this guy. See, vx, 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 d by dx, d by dx, d by dx, a, x, a, y, a, z, i, j, k. And so for this guy, it's these three terms, v, y vy, 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 d by dy, d by dy, d by dy, ax, ay, az in the i, j, k directions. And same thing for over here. Okay, so this is the convective derivative. It relies on this, which means if I move in this direction, how's the a vector going to change? Okay, and that's the total derivative there. Um, I think I've spoken too much on that. Um, we can move things around. This is a very unsatisfactory way to write um, the momentum. And the reason why is we have time derivative over here and the time derivative over here. So let's group our terms together. Let's take this and group our terms together. I'm going to put it off the side like that so you can see it. Okay. So we're going to rewrite it as the time derivative of p vector. And remember, we're substituting in d by dt of a, the total derivative, not the partial derivative, but in fact, I'm the total derivative, the convective derivative of the a vector. So p vector minus, well, minus qa, moving to the other side, so it's plus qa. Okay? This isn't just the derivative with respect to time. This is the time, this includes that v dot del of a as well. And then that's going to be equal to negative the gradient of 
well, we had v, the potential, minus the velocity dot a vector. Okay? So that's the form that we're going to see this guy. Let me draw a box around this. And the momentum, the force is actually dp w t. That's the actual force. But we're going we're gonna to fudge. Okay? We're going to call this the canonical momentum. We'll see why that's important. Um, we're going to actually find that the fields themselves contain a momentum. So um, just thinking of the momentum of the particle is not enough to get the full picture of what's actually happening. And the quantity on the other side is the, um, the U. Okay. And so now we have our familiar equation that the force okay is equal to the negative the gradient of some u okay that's what we're used to dealing with the mechanics um, even though this isn't quite the momentum that we deal with mechanics it, it it tends to simplify the equation and there's actually a lot of truth to this statement right here we'll see that in a minute so thanks for your time next we cover energy and momentum in electrodynamics using maxwell's equations what we can discover about um, newton's third law and whether fields contain momentum and how much. And I appreciate all the time you've taken watching my videos. And be sure to like and share this with your friends. Take care. Bye.